So hello and welcome to our mid-month update where we bring you the latest on the technical rollout of the Alonso Test Nets program with just some of the team responsible for delivering it. Uh, we're into Alonso White now and we've just completed Alonso Blue. So Nigel, tell us about Alonso Blue. How's it all gone? Thanks, Tim. Um, it's gone well. It's gone really well. And uh, it's it's gone well with a big thanks to the community that's helped us. They've uncovered issues for us to fix um, and we've got through it successfully. So Alonso Blue now is is uh, complete. We've managed to get almost 40 uh, community members, SPOs and our, our Pioneer Blue Task Force all updating Alonso nodes and actually running the first three exercises in our Plutus transactions, which I know uh, Kevin and, uh, and Dimitri will tell, talk you through in a bit more detail. So yes, Kevin, these exercises, these have been really central to helping people navigate their way and uh, really give some structure to the testing. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yes, yeah, certainly, Tim. So the exercises, what they're designed to do is to onboard uh, new users into the uh, Alonzo test nets, and uh, they're geared towards uh, first setting up the node, introducing people to some things that um, are veteran SPOs, stakeable operators will be very familiar with, but the new group of uh, Plutus pioneers and Plutus app developers are going to be much less um, used to. So the first exercise is all about just getting things set up. Um, exercise three we've run on Alonzo um, Blue is all about how do you submit uh, Plutus scripts onto the uh, chain, how do, how do you create transactions uh, that embed Plutus scripts and have these executed. And we haven't yet done exercise two on Alonzo Blue. We're looking forward to doing that on Alonzo White. Exercise two is all about following through with us as we execute a hard fork. And we're going to have a lot of fun when we have the party uh, later on, Tim. So, Ben, you've been responsible for helping with the community management side of things, which is obviously quite a, quite a big job already and is going to scale rapidly. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about some of the work you've been doing to, uh, to prepare the way. Yeah, it's, it's been really exciting. It's helping us uh, get the processes together. We're bringing together SPOs, developers, a learning community, and Alonzo in the testnet. Um, so we've set the Discord server up as a, as a community platform that we're going to be building out from. We've had over 100 applications uh, to volunteer and help us um, support the community as it grows. And it's a really exciting phase because it's a conceptualization phase. So people are going to get a really uh, an opportunity to help us uh, shape it. Um, so we're relatively small numbers in blue, thinking about Alonzo. Um, the... Onboarding has been done through referrals. So I've had a lot of DMs with people asking me how to get in. At the moment, you need to be referred by somebody. Um, but we're going to open that up and scale it out uh, over the next few weeks. And also we've set up office hours and a code clinic in the voice channels to support the community. So it's been a lot of fun. And Demetrius, from a technical point of view, I'm sure there's been a lot of very useful learnings already from Alonzo Blue. Indeed, Tim. Uh, technically, we had uh, a few key learnings from uh, the first couple of phases of Blue and the White that we're entering now. Uh, the most important of those being uh, that, first of all, we need to have uh, the execution units uh, that need to be known in advance. And uh, this is something that uh, we witnessed as part of Blue 2. And now we are uh, actually uh, going to develop an automation uh, in the next version of the node for uh, known uh, in advance of submitting a smart contract transaction. And um, also another uh, really important uh, key finding uh, from Blue 1 was that uh, while we tried to transition from Blue 1 to Blue 2, uh, we had actually to respin the Genesis file in order to allow for uh, the Plutus transactions maximum size to pass. There was a limitation that if the transaction was bigger than what the parameter was set uh, uh, in that environment, uh, it, would, it would fail. And uh, in order to resolve that, uh, we needed to adjust the variables uh, related to the transaction size, which was the maximum value uh, transaction output limit. And uh, that's now fixed, and uh, this supports uh, the bigger uh, transaction size that we have due to having the script uh, inside the transaction for Alonso, which is uh, something new compared to the Mary and the previous uh, eras. And again, this is, uh, this is now being identified, and uh, we're fixing that uh, before spinning up uh, our next environments. So, Nigel, at the point of recording this video, we're just about to hard fork. Maybe let's just talk a little bit more about White, where we are now and where we're going next. Alonzo White. 
We now have three um, Alonzo Blue with Alonzo White. We've introduced more and more members. As Ben said, the, they've come through with more referrals from SBOs. We're widening that community. So in the meeting on Friday, we introduced exchanges. We also introduced Catalyst winners and also all our partners. And those guys are then going to start um, in Alonzo White, firing up their nodes um, and getting used to uh, Alonzo. In White, we're asking them in this hard fork procedure to make sure that they start their nodes in Mary and then they will hard fork to Alonzo. And we'll start that later on today. So, Kevin, um, one of the other things I understand that is due to be integrated during this white process is the PAB, the PAB, the Plutus application backend. Now, this is a pretty important part of the overall smart contracts rollout, isn't it? Perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about that side of things. Absolutely, Tim. The uh, PAB, the Plutus application backend, um, is absolutely critical for writing complex uh, dApps. So what we've got so far with Alonzo Blue, the early stages of Alonzo White, is a system where you can write Plutus scripts, you can submit these, have these executed on chain and see the results from executing them. But we're not, what we're not able to do is to link together uh, at transactions into a more complex uh, application. So if, for example, you have uh, a transaction that needs to be executed, if a previous transaction had succeeded, you can't do that. What the Plutus application backend does is to provide you a nice seamless way uh, to link together all of these things uh, through Haskell uh, code uh, that also links up with the blockchain emulator. What we'll be able to do is to link together uh, these scripts into much more complex transactions, real uh, DApp swaps, all the kind of things that people are really interested in using. And of course, because we're doing this in Haskell, you'll also be able to verify or check the quality of the code that you're producing. So there'll be a lot of things you can do automatically to determine that your code is uh, consistent and compliant. So the white phase, um, around a month, I understand it's expected to last. But Nigel, maybe just remind us, what will mark the end of the white phase and the beginning of the purple phase? Well, in white, we're introducing more of our Alonzo components. The two critical ones are the Cardano wallet, um, aka the Cardano uh, wallet backend, and also our Bluetooth application backend, as Kevin's just mentioned. Both these things we have to integrate to the Alonzo node first so that they can process uh, Alonzo, Alonzo transactions. So those are the two critical things that we're looking for um, in order to be able to complete white. But in addition to that, we have the other elements of the Cardano family, such as GraphQL and Explorer, that will also make sure we'll be ready for Alonzo. We get those things in place, we get more people on board, um, and we get them through updating nodes and set, starting with simple Plutus transactions, and we'll have finished the white phase and we're ready to move on to the next one. Demetrius, we're looking at about a month for Alonzo White. Indeed. Uh, we're looking at about a month for our detailed plan for all of the different uh, color phases that uh, we have in, in place. And uh, obviously this depends on the progress and uh, any unforeseen issues might uh, slightly uh, impact that. But up to now, we are in line with our expectations and the overall plan. And uh, actually, uh, as part of White, uh, there might be some uh, more features that uh, we weren't initially anticipating. Of course, uh, this is on top of uh, having more and more people participating and uh, providing their uh, views and feedback on, uh, on the usability of uh, the features that we're rolling out and the different components, as Nigel mentioned before, and we'll keep doing that. And uh, in terms of the additional features for White, uh, uh, let's hold that and uh, discuss in more details in, uh, in, the, in, in the next update that we'll do for the 360. Nigel, yes, indeed. And I think we'll dive more into purple as well in the next uh, 360 show at the end of this month. But meanwhile, perhaps you can just give us a high-level overview of what purple will involve once we've moved past white. Well, as a brief reminder again, we'll get through to the end of white. We'll have the Cardano wallet and the Plutus application backend integrated to the node. Once we've got those pieces, we'll be ready to actually start purple. We've split the purple phase into two. So we've got light purple and uh, dark purple. In the light purple phase, it will be the start of the public network and we'll introduce a lot more community members to get involved. 
and to be able to develop different kind of smart contract D apps. Now, in this phase, in the light purple phase, we won't have the Plutus application back and integrated to the wallet. And it's this part, which is the key uh, element that we have to do as an integration part when we actually reach the dark purple phase. Um, this first phase will enable us to increase the amount of community members and for those guys to continue to develop their, their smart contract applications. And then in the second phase is when it all comes together um, and we'll see probably the partners who are most advanced in, in developing their dApps to integrate against the full Plutus application backend technology that's been fully integrated with all our uh, Cardano components. Now, Nigel, just before you go, um, we've also been working with a number of Plutus development partners, who some of whom we've introduced on previous shows, uh, testing out proof of concept. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about progress there. They've all done really well. They've got some exciting applications coming coming online. Uh, we've got uh, digital exchanges. We've got swaps. We've got loan applications. We've got oracles and a whole whole uh, multitude of different uh, D apps that are coming down the road. Now they've developed theirs and finished phase one, where we've got some working um, applications against the mock chain, where they've developed these things in a local environment. And their next phase is to then start getting involved with the network, uh, uh, Alonzo, uh, where they we can start off with doing what everybody else has been doing, updating the nodes, um, doing simple Plutus transactions, and then they'll end by actually integrating to the full Plutus library, the full Plutus application backend. And at that point, we will then start to see fully working dApps on our testnet. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the update today. That's it for now. See you at the end of the month.